Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to the cash flows from operating activities section of a direct method statement of cash flows. So let's take a look. Um, a direct method statement of cash flows is really no different than an indirect statement of cash flows, except for one piece, and that is the cash flows from operating activities. Cash flows from investing activities are the same. Cash flows from financing activities are the same. The way you structure the statement is the same. But cash flows from operations are done differently. And specifically, when it comes to the direct method of the statement of cash flows, that directness refers to putting activities in your operating cash flow section that are directly describing the ins and outs of cash from operations. Now, here I have kind of a summary of, of, of how you approach this. And you'll notice I start this summary by saying, here are the things you don't include in the operating cash flow section under the direct method. And so one of the things that we don't include is cash received from or spent on PP&E transactions or other investment activity. So specifically, if you, if you know your statement of cash flows, what I'm describing here is CFI, cash flows from investing activities. So you do not put anything related to investing activities, PP&E transactions, or other actual investments, debt or equity investments, into your CFO section. Um, you'll notice I also say to exclude cash received from or spent on equity and debt transactions. This is your own equity, your own debt, so your stock, your bonds, except for interest. These are your CFF activities, cash flows from financing activities. Now, you might be saying, well, no kidding. Of course, we're not going to put CFI and CFF in the CFO section. But the reason I'm telling you this way is because in U.S. GAAP, the actual regulation defines operating cash flows as any cash flows that are not CFI or CFF. So it's a definition by exclusion. And so therefore, anything else you're going to put in your CFO section. And specifically, it's going to be those that impact the income statement. The income statement is also known as the statement of operating activity or the statement of operations. So if something appears on your income statement, it is going to go, if it's cash related, in the operating cash flow section of your direct method statement of cash flows. All right, so here I have an example for you from EMC Corporation. It's a rather old example, but it gets the point across. Um, you'll notice this is covering 2012, 13, and 14. And here I've just cut out the CFO section of their direct method statement of cash flows for you. Notice it says cash flows from operating activities, and then it directly includes cash in or cash out for items that would appear on the income statement. So cash received from customers, cash paid to suppliers, dividends received, interest paid, so forth and so on, right? And of course, they are positive or negative depending on whether cash is coming in or cash is going out. This is a stark difference from an indirect method statement of cash flows where you would actually start with net income, which inherently contains all of these items, and then you would back out the things that are non-cash from it. Right? These are two very different approaches, but in the direct method statement of cash flows, you directly include the operating cash items rather than doing a include net income and then back out non-relevant items. All right, that's it. Hope you found this helpful. Hope it helps you understand the difference between the CFO section of a direct and indirect method statement of cash flows. Thanks for watching, and please join me for another video.